I'm joined now by the Honorary Secretary of the Royal Society of Biology, Professor Richard Rees. Great to meet you. Thank you for coming in. Now, during this programme, we're going to be exploring how biosciences are helping to address global issues. In terms of the UK, what are you doing exactly? The Royal Society of Biology is in, involved in supporting almost every aspect of the biosciences and there are some significant global challenges that biology plays a huge impact on in understanding and trying to uh, find solutions to uh, some of the significant problems that we face today. One, one example is, is antimicrobial resistance. We've all heard about uh, hospital superbugs uh, and using fundamental biology to understand how bacteria work, how they're able to uh, interact with the current sets of antibiotics that we have and how we're able to devise new ones. Uh, and also trying to, to think about uh, antibiotics, not necessarily as, as the solution to uh, understanding resistance uh, of, of uh, bacteria to antibiotics, but really seeing them as part of a, a much stricter regime of understanding the whole notion of, of how bacteria are able to uh, generate a, a resistance to the antibiotics that we currently have, and then taking it forward from there so we understand much more of a rationale and a holistic view of how we can start to treat infections. It all sounds very complicated. Quite often we focus in the media on all the bad stories, but actually it's a very exciting time and it feels like there's an awful lot that can be achieved. There is. That, that's absolutely right. And, and really starting to, to take some of the fundamental biological principles that we've, uh, as a country, as, as the United Kingdom, we, we really have started to, to understand and take those into uh, the ability to solve problems is, is what the Royal Society of Biology is trying to, to facilitate. So that's the big picture, as it were. But what about on a more local level? Clearly, there's an uncertain political climate at the moment. And what are you doing as a sector to counteract that? One of the main functions of the Royal Society of Biology is to make sure that biology is open for everyone. And you're right, we do face uncertain times. The political climate is, is going to be difficult over the next few years. But as, a, as a, an organisation, what we're really trying to do is uh, ensure that there is a, a, a format and a forum for uh, individuals to be able to express their views ensure that biology has a voice um, and the Royal Society of Biology has been very good at providing that voice. We have over 18,000 members, we have uh, a, a very large number of member organisations and having a very disparate set of voices all uh, talking about the same issue is helpful but having a much more coordinated and therefore unified voice we think is a much stronger process. So that unified voice uh, is uh, acting at all levels of, of government, uh, both in, the, uh, in London, in Westminster, but also in the regions as well, in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, to make sure that biology is at the forefront of the agenda and therefore at the forefront of any policy making procedures. It seems to be a very strong, active community, but looking to the next generation, what more can you do to encourage the next generation of bioscientists. Bioscientists come from everywhere, so it's, th th there's no one place that they come through. We, we might have a view, and you know, myself who works in university setting might have a view that you have to come through with a biology degree, but that's not true. You know, we have many children uh, from a very young age, before any biology is formally taught, that have a real genuine interest in the world that are around them, the natural world. They'll go out into their garden, they'll visit a zoo, whatever it's going to be, and they will be genuinely interested in, uh, in the world of biology. So we encourage and foster that. We make sure that there are op opportunities available for them to really understand much more about the world that, uh, that is around them. But of course we go all the way through from very young children to, to those who are retired and still have an interest in biology. Either they've had a career in biology or they want to give something back or they're just interested in some of the wildlife around them. They might have a, a particular interest in bats or badgers or whatever else it's going to be. And again the Royal Society of Biology gives them the opportunity to come together, discuss these issues, understand more about them uh, and then hopefully learn more. Well, it's been fascinating to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank, Thank you. you.